Hello everybody, Future Kermit here, giving you a quick heads up on our interview today for this Grog Zen episode with my friend Veronica, uh, that sometimes the uh, audio gets a little bit messy. Veronica uh, lives in an apartment with a lot of other roommates, and it gets very noisy at times. Uh, we kind of did our best to edit and cut around it, um, but sometimes it just intersects at parts where, uh, and why we're keeping this episode up, is that the story she tells is very personal and powerful and impactful, and we didn't want to kind of mess it up or, or get rid of it. So uh, apologies for that. going to try in the future to make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen. So kind of, you know, figuring some things out. And, you know, of course, every person is a little bit different with their recording situation. Uh, so please bear with us. But I think this is like a really cool, awesome, strong episode coming out the gate. So uh, enjoy. <laughs> You unlock this door with the key of conversation. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of question. A dimension of connection. A dimension of thought. You're moving into a podcast of both inquiry and kinship, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Grog Zone. Welcome, everybody. We're back with another episode of The Grog Zone, where I interview my friends, which is mostly just as we are finding. Uh, I say nice things about my friends, and I ask them questions about how the brains work and what they like doing and stuff like that. So this week, I have uh, a, a very good friend of mine that I've known for many years. Uh, Veronica, Veronica, introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name's Veronica. Um, I... Uh... I guess I, I don't know. I've known Andrew for a couple uh, a couple of years um, uh, back before I transitioned. As in fact, um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> you 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 make it sound so simple. Yeah, no, I've known you for gosh, how many years has it been? I was gonna I was gonna look it up, um, and then I just totally forgot, which is because I'm such a professional host. But um, I think. At least you knew me around 2012, 2013. Gosh, has it been that long? Definitely before 20, either before or during for 2013, because that's when I joined the military. Okay, yeah, no, because I remember yeah. before you joined the military. So I guess let's let's yeah. actually, let's get into that. Let's be our starting point, because when I was leading up to this, when I knew that you were going to be my next guest, I was like remembering back, because it's like, I don't want to pre-plan these interviews too much because right. i want it to just be start a ball rolling and then follow it but i guess i need to kind of find out where that ball starts is i can still remember the first time i met you in person and where we're we're i've i'm picking you up to go to see a movie with a bunch of other people right. And I've never seen you before. And you and your brother appear wearing trench coats and fedoras, and I go, oh, no. "What have I gotten myself into?" And then, and then, oh, like the day gosh. was, I know. Do you remember that? Like it was like, "Oh I... wow, we're mm, some." <laughs> I have gotten okay, myself so... into something. <laughs> okay, so back way back when, I thought that I was super cool. Um, Didn't we all? <laughs> yeah. See, here's the thing, like, uh, you know, I've kind of blocked that out of my memory, but I yeah, I used to... This is, this is not This is not to rake you over the coals, it was just sort of an interesting <laughs> moment, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so, yeah, I used to... I think it was... Yeah, so I used to uh, wear trench coats and fedoras, both of us did, um, for no apparent reason. Um just because they thought we thought they were super cool um and that is how a lot of people first remember meeting both of us is that we talk using very similar voice patterns we look totally different and uh we both wear <laughs> trench coats and fedoras i don't remember oh, you ever goodness. doing that again but it was such a you never know when you meet somebody, especially when you have an opening moment like that, that that person is going to be, like, a good friend of yours. Like, right. you... I've, like, I've told you multiple times in, like, back in the day that, like, I look back through my old folder of memes that I made, and your face is on a lot of them. Like, you were just yeah. a really... <sighs> I want to find the right language to, to, to put you over, but still communicate the idea. Like you are a very, 
specific unique person and i'm not doing that yeah. as like a means of like like you are just you radiate this just you're you're different and i don't want that to come off as bad no, but like great. it makes you it it i don't know it makes you interesting it makes like you yeah. just have a different way of operating the way you speak the way you think and i think that's really cool i think that's why I'd say, I'd say, I mean, I'd say we're friends now. I don't know how much we were friends then. It's kind of weird thinking back. I feel like both of us were very different back then. Um, obviously, from what yes. a little bit you've talked about for a lot of other major reasons. But yeah. um, even just the, you know, when you're younger and you don't freaking know what you're doing at all. Um, yeah. And you just, like, come across different people. Because, like, what? We, what? I knew you for... It had to have been at least a year before you left for the military, right? Uh, it might have been a year. Okay, so I'm pretty sure there was at least one outdoor event that we both attended. So that was probably during the summer um, or spring or early fall or something. Was the, wasn't the, It was the fair, wasn't it? Was that you? I think that was you there. I have such a hard time putting together some of the times. With who I'm was more summer. talking about the outdoor, like... I think it was someone's party or something, someone's okay. birthday party or something like that. Gotcha. And then also I went to the, uh, I think it was like the Equestria Girls uh, <laughs> v- movie premiere. That was where I remember you. meeting you. That was that was the initial. Okay. That was At least that's what I remember of being the first okay. time I met you in person. So. All right. Yeah. So that was, um, you know what? We could just look up when that. I know that's what, that was my out. thought Let's coming into that. this. Look it up, but um, but no, because I also of you describing going into the military is that I'm I remember being at the June fair. 16th. June sixth. What year? Twenty thirteen. Okay, so yeah, so, I knew you. I knew that I went was into the day the mil- I properly met you, and then when did you join yeah, the military? September twenty thirteen. So yeah, it was about uh, yeah, it was about uh, half a year that you knew me. That seems crazy thinking back that it was like I met you and then you made enough of an impact that I sent you a letter you while did. you were in boot camp, which seems kind of crazy. I think I, I think I still have that at least that initial letter, which is I, again probably things that I should have pulled up or maybe not. I don't know. We don't we don't always get it. We don't got to be deep into just reminiscing over yeah. things. That's not what this is about. But it was just where my brain started with this of yeah i definitely treasured all the letters that all you guys sent me probably not to you know play favorites but probably yours most of all it was very personal um and no uh, memory of what i wrote in mine that was a robot that wrote that i don't feel like looking back it was more the thought that counts in my brain and i don't want to think about what the heck i would have been writing about but uh, yeah um and I treasured that. Um, I don't have it anymore. I'm pretty sure I lost it in my house fire in oh. 2015. Oh, I, I think forgot. it was. There are so many things that you that hap- that you did that happened that I like. I totally forgot about that. Um, yeah. So hang on. So I remember that it was like Valentine's weekend, and it was. You know, this is the great thing about the internet. I can just look up these things. Um, <laughs> Who, who needs fact checking and date checking? We you yeah, just you I'm... just you just rock, you roll, you reminisce vaguely. I want to actually back up a little bit because you talked about joining the military, and right. I even if we talked about it back then, I feel like you have a much different view on it, especially now that you've been through it. But I guess oh. thinking back, what what made you actually want to like join the military? Like you went into the navy, right? The navy, yes. Um, why, okay, so, why that and why specifically the Navy? So, okay, so here's, growing up, I kind of just had a vague notion that I was going to end up in the military. I don't know why. It was just sort of this vague notion in the back of my head that you're probably going to end up in the military. College isn't for you. Going directly into the workforce isn't for you. You're going to be in the military. That's, that's where you belong. How 
political and or religious do we, are we trying to get this like honestly You're, speaking, we are, we are rock and rolling whatever direction you want to go in if, okay, this, if so, this turns into an unreasonable trash fire it will still have been a really nice moment to sit okay. down and chat so all right um so uh when i was younger um I essentially was kind of in a, my fa entire family was basically in a cult. Um, it was called Regnum Christi. It was the sister organization to the Legionaries of Christ, which has had been, um, had some really bad, you know, uh, scandals. Um, and just, I'm going to take your word that you're putting that lightly, <laughs> very lightly. Yes. And um, a lot of my mindset growing up was just based around that, um, based around this <laughs> idea of, you know, self-sacrifice and putting others first and and not in a positive or healthy way. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's the vibe I'm getting from your description. At least. Yeah. Uh, I've often described myself as basically just being Adora from Shira. Um, and not to spoil or anything, but like a lot of the trauma oh, that Adora grew up with, uh, I really relate with. Um, just because uh, I feel like I've always had other people's expectations put onto me instead of having my own agency to do what I wanted. Um, that makes so much more sense now. Like this. To take a small tangent where we're just going to get right back on, like, this is why a part of why I wanted to do this, because this is stuff, yeah. like, uh, I guess I didn't say to you, actually, like, one of the things that inspired me to do this is that I was recording something, like, last year that I listened to recently, because it finally went up, and we're just talking, I'm, like, talking about how you, like, connect to characters in shows a lot quicker than you connect yes. to people, and I just declared to the heavens, half-jokingly, half-not, it's like, why can't you just ask people their backstory? <laughs> and that's kind yes. of what this podcast is, because it's not like in normal life, like you don't just go, tell me about your background, just out of the blue. Like right. it's not something that you can just do that. And it's not like it's frowned upon. It's just like, it's not really just not of a do. thing that happens. So it's like that I was like with interviews, it's just like that gives you a reason that you can have those. And I feel like that, you learn a lot about people in those moments. That, yeah. Because, like, I've known you for years, and I've known some of the stuff you went through, but, like, I didn't know the specifics of that. I just always knew that you had grown up in a religious, a very religious household. Yeah. You know, I saw back in the day, like, I had seen um, some of your family, or these people you knew at church, and I just go, they're very religious, but, like, still probably not great, but that extra, like, you know, the, the, the turn of the, the cult, cult dial thing. was not yeah. something I was aware of. And now also from what you were saying makes your connection yeah. to the door even I'll make even more sense with this. So yeah. I, I apologize. That. Continue. So, um, so yeah, like I, well, one of the things is when I first started going to elementary school, I went to a, a school that was run by the cult. Um, like not even I, just like Catholic school, like a specific a specific school that was run by the Legionaries of Christ. Okay, then. Yes. Um, and has since been shut down because the Legionaries of Christ had such a... Um, there was such a ruinous effect on the school's reputation because it was associated with the Legionaries of Christ, which still exists, by the way. Um, Those and are very has, hard to scratch out. Yeah. And supposedly they're better now, but I don't know how much I believe that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I um, that is a lot of what uh, kind of informed my um, beliefs about myself, like about what my place was in the world, like the sense of like sort of self-destructive, self-sacrifice, um, those notions. I think that is actually what played the most into that idea of, yeah, I'm just going to go into the military. It's, it's going to be what I do. Um, as well as the fact that I just operate really well in, uh, in, you know, structured environments like that. Um, but the thing that actually like pushed me like over the edge into Okay, time to seriously start considering the military is that I was actually 
I actually wanted to be a firefighter when I was getting into junior and senior oh. year of high school. Yeah. I feel um, like that's actually a really good fit for you. Yes. Uh, back when I was not disabled, it would have been a great fit for me. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So I started looking into that. Um, and one of my friends in one of my classes said, hey, you know, they have firefighting jobs in the National Guard. You should check them out. And I was like, okay. And little did I know that that was like the cue for him to like start dragging me to all these like appointments to basically like rush me through. You know, I, I met with the recruiter. And the thing is, they just wanted to rush all of their recruit, potential recruits through the recruiting process as fast as humanly possible. Um, and it kind of, you know, set off some vague alarm bells, but uh, nothing too major. Um, but then I, st my parents were like, hey, you should like look into the other branches of the military just to make sure that this is what you want. And, I was kind of resistant to it because I was, I always have been very stubborn. Uh, but then I went and I looked at the other recruiting offices and the Navy's was actually very laid back. Um, it was a very relaxed atmosphere. And I was like, huh, maybe I want to do something with the Navy instead because they also have firefighters. In fact, every sailor who's on a ship is qualified as a firefighter in a small sense. It's um, impressive. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as, so when I told the, um, the National Guard recruiter that I was thinking, hey, you know, I think I'm going to look into some of my other options before, uh, you know, getting stuck into the, um, the National Guard, he, like, the reaction was extremely obvious, like, it became very clear that he was trying to push me into it. It was like, hey, well, you, you won't get this and that with the other branches. Like, very, <laughs> very high pressure. Like, the, he's, he's the putting hard up the pressure sell. On me. The very hard sell. My bonus and I was is trying like, to okay. walk out of the door. How can I keep it here? Yeah. Um, so I uh, immediately took a step back after that, um, and I looked more into the Navy. And, uh, I, you know, I looked at the other branches a little bit, but... Um, one of the things that uh, they did when I walked into the Navy recruiting office is they're like, "Hey, like, look onto the on the Navy website and just see what jobs there are uh, that you might be interested in." So uh, the ASVAB, uh, A S V A B, I believe, um, is uh, their aptitude test um, that they give to all new recruits, um, and. They use it to test where you're going, where you, um, what might, what jobs might be a good fit for you. Yeah. Um, and I got a very high score and they were like, okay, you can do pretty much anything you want. Just figure out what you want. We'll try to get you that job. Um, if there's an opening, you know, um, and when I went onto the website, I found, uh, aviation rescue swimmer on like the featured jobs tab on the side of the 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 web page i was like that's it that's what i want to do uh, i tested for it and i got a decent enough uh uh physical aptitude you know they, they had like physical trials for these types of you know physically oriented jobs um you know beyond just the general yeah. uh military testing um and i did okay uh and i got accepted um and i went into that and i did it um yeah that's about it for what, that what did that entail because i remember you telling stories of like jumping out of aircraft into the okay. ocean and that sounding like the like craziest freaking mission impossible james bond something and you'd <laughs> always say it in in very classic veronica fashion in the most just like yeah, it's a thing that's happening. <laughs> I'm jumping out of planes <laughs> in the ocean like it was, I guess, because, yeah, I mean, obviously, you probably would have to do it enough times for training purposes yeah. that it became normalized. But, like, you said it as if it was, like, a boring occurrence that you just had to put up with. Maybe it's a bit of a spoiler, but if anyone is reading this, or, sorry, wa wa watching or listening to this and is thinking, oh, hey, that sounds like something I want to do, just don't do it. Don't do just it. Just don't. Find a different job. Um, so... Um, what we did, 
uh, what the the main job, um, you know, the thing that they advertised to us at least was uh, rescue swimming. Um, and if anyone has seen The Guardian, uh, it's a movie. Um, it's yes, basically that. Um, yeah, basically whenever anyone um, goes down in an aircraft or someone's boat sinks or anything like that, any time anyone needs to be rescued out at sea, um, our job is to go out there and rescue them. We were in helicopters, and the helicopters would come down to a low hover over the water, uh, about 10 or 15 feet off of the water, and we'd just jump into the water from there. Um, so not super high or anything like that. Still jumping um, out of a helicopter into the ocean. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, so after we do that, uh, we'd like swim over to them and check to make sure that they're okay physically, make sure that they have nothing like tangling them up or that, that might hurt them if we try to, you know, rescue them. Um, and then uh, they would let down a hook from the helicopter and we'd hook them up to the we'd uh we'd have like this strap that would go around their body or if they had like a survival vest on survival vests have built-in lifting rings oh um, like a carabiner that's neat yeah so like uh if they were a pilot or something because a lot of the people that we would be risking are pilots um they would have like a built-in ring so it was nice and easy we would just hook it in um but if it was just a civilian or something uh there was a strap that we'd like wrap around their upper body um, and then we'd hoist them up into the helicopter and, uh, fly away and fly back to shore. Um, give them like a blanket in the helicopter, make sure they don't get like hypothermia or anything. Yeah. Um, so that was basically what was advertised to us as our main, uh, duty. Now, the thing is, the Coast Guard also does this and they basically, they, they like, own all of the rescues within the continental United States. Yeah, it seems like that's more what they're about. Yeah. So, um, as a Navy rescue swimmer, as opposed to a Coast Guard rescue swimmer, I never actually went on any real missions. Oh, I didn't <laughs> Ever. know that. Not even one? Yeah. No, not even one. Um, I trained a lot for them, but I never even went on one. Uh Yes, yeah, so that's why I'm saying that like this really isn't that big of a deal. In my I was opinion. expecting <laughs> another another no. twist of something in the activity or some shady or no. corrupt or something. But because I'm like, of the grand scheme of military jobs, just like helping rescue seems like pretty like, hey, as opposed yeah. to you know, you know, a lot of other terrible things the military yeah. has done a bit a part of. That seems pretty positive. Yeah. So that that was kind of my thought process. Even even at that point in my life, I was somewhat iffy about our role in the Mil middle east but i didn't really know very much about it um but you know i was like yeah at least this way i if i end up regretting you know joining the military later uh i won't like have killed anyone <laughs> yeah um anyway so that was that whole rescue thing was kind of what was advertised to us in certain places outside the continental United States, that actually is a lot of, there, there is a lot of that in, for example, Guam. Uh, the Coast Guard doesn't, you know, own Guam. Um, so if you go out to Guam, you're going to get a lot of rescues. I never went to Guam. There's a couple of technical differences between a detachment and a deployment, but I was sent on, sent on several detachments out to uh, Bahrain in the Middle East. Um, and... While I was in Bahrain, again, no rescues, um, but uh, my job was basically to ferry um, mail uh, and passengers to and from ships that were in the Arabian Gulf. So were you driving a boat or were you just part of boat crew to move people around? Oh, uh, no, it, it was still in a helicopter. Oh, um, so you're, yeah. are you, you're not flying the helicopter or... Yeah, I wasn't the pilot. I was the crew chief. Um, the crew chief is responsible for basically everything that isn't flying. We are also responsible for securely stowing, you know, mail in the back there to make sure it doesn't fall out during flying, making sure that, you know, briefing passengers, uh, basically, you know, being their uh, 
um, like a steward, flight attendants, yeah, yeah, fl- steward, stewardess, uh, type thing. Um, <laughs> uh, and you know, educating them about the dangerous areas of the helicopter. You know, giving them their don't go into the rotor blades. Bad you know, idea. Don't go in the yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like the the the, um, the rotor blades are angled forward. So if you walk in from the front of a helicopter, you can get your head chopped off. Oh, geez. Um, I was so, making a joke. <laughs> no, yeah. Wow. Okay, uh, then. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's good to ask. Good to make jokes and be told, yeah. hey, wait, no, that was an actual problem. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, a couple times, someone who wasn't really listening to the, the passenger brief, they would go off wandering towards the front of the helicopter. And I'd have to, like, grab the back of their shirt and be like, stop! <laughs> you know, drag them back in. Um, stuff like that, you know, ultimately, yeah, I didn't really have any direct, uh, um, effect on like, you know, actual combat stuff. So, you know, I still feel pretty good about that, but the fact remains that, uh, by being there, I was helping support the continued occupation of the Arabian Gulf, which is a big part of, you know, like those ships were launching aircraft that were bombing places. Um, So in a kind of roundabout way, I was helping support those people, bombing people, you know. Uh, And so that's a lot of, you know, even though I don't really have any trauma, like regarding direct combat, I still regret my involvement in that sense. Um, Under understandable, like, and yeah. kind of what I wanted to move to next is like your, um, the the you that went into the military and then essentially disappeared, except for like popping into my life every now and then, and then the one that came out. Oh, speaking of which, uh, I think this is kind of a funny story. Okay. Uh, this is when we were first like getting to know each other. Um, Who is we? Just for you and you and me. A- um, after in the the post post. No pre. Okay. Sorry, this is a while back. Okay, um, got it. I'm glad I, I remember, asked to keep the timeline straight. I remember at one point. Uh, you said something like kind of catty to me and in my you know on my in my facebook comments and like i like held a grudge for like a week (laughs) and then you like did a very similar thing to what i did that earned me the catty remark so i like was super catty back to you (laughs) and you were like really you're holding a grudge that long and i was like yeah you know what i'm sorry that was we were That's really ridiculous. We were so stupid back then. Yeah. Um, and like, we lot, I feel like we had a lot of good clashes over, again, things that were stupid and didn't matter. But in like, in a way that I look back and like, I smile on. There's other people that yeah. I had that with that I look back and I go, I should not have engaged with this human. This was only <laughs> painful. But anytime I remember like, our dumb clashes, it was like, yeah, that was always a f- like not fun, but it was like that was entertaining and interesting. Like yeah. it strengthened a, a a bond in the in the macro sense. And, and like, the thing was like, after we both we were both like, wow, okay, yeah, we were we were pretty mean to each other. Like that sort of vulnerability that we both showed to each other. Like I'm really sorry for being catty to you. You I know, and, like that. But yeah, um, I guess that kind I, of I didn't definitely make sense. felt like I definitely felt after that happened after like both of us apologized to each other and forgave each other um, that I, I definitely felt very close to you. Oh, um, <laughs> I feel bad. I have no memory for you. Oh, well. There's a lot of the, t- the time back that I don't remember. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but yeah, I think that was a lot of what uh, made us, uh, you know, sort of brought us closer at that time. Um, uh, but anyway, fast forwarding again to us reuniting um, as like a whole friend group, but 
especially you and I. Because I feel um, like it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure we really reconnected at our friend Caitlin's wedding, which who knows, yes. maybe I'll have one day on this. And I think in the time in between, because I don't think I had had any really contact with you because I had no reason to at that point, really. Right. Um, and was dealing with the, I think I had only, when was that wedding? You know, we could look these things up, but it was, it was in October. So I would have been out of the web for a while, but I was still not doing too well. Um, yeah. And kind of seeing you all again, you and a lot of other people who had escaped it was very nice. But I feel like I didn't know, and as much or as little you want to get into this then, I did not know that you had transitioned to that point. And or if I did, I think that was the first time I saw you. And yes. you were like... You were you were great. You were incredible. I was like, "Wow, look at you!" You know, it was exciting. Yeah. Um. So, at that point, um, yeah, we hadn't actually we we talked a little bit, um, after you know post post me coming out and starting my transition, um, and uh, I think you definitely knew, but at the same time, what do you mean, like you, when you knew that. Uh, like, or just like conceptually that you were transitioning, under, not like yeah, just okay. conceptually that I was transitioning. I thought you but were telling me that like I picked up on your egg energy, and I was going to be like, oh no, 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 no Robo no, Andrew no. did not do that. He was not no. capable of that back then. No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, Robo Andrew. Okay, here side note about me and my own growth is that post post escape from toxic web, I became right. my thing is that I became human because I look back and there's so much of how I operated that was like non I I would actively try to ignore and try not to feel my emotions and I was very much instead of like trying to understand how I was feeling at a particular moment I was like I need to help people this person has it wronged me so I need to be positive to them and it was very like like yeah. A lot of the stuff back in the group was, was a lot of that, was just a lot I, of me putting myself through emotional turmoil and telling myself to stop feeling that because it wasn't, I was trying to do good, which was yeah. such a bad way to treat myself. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but it also I meant, was, like, I was so bad at picking up on literally anything social, because yeah. when you don't follow your emotions, you turn into a robot, and it's not a good time. Yeah. If you don't know it um, at the time. I was aware that, like, I, I was aware that you... you you um that you had compartmentalized uh or, or that you had um like identified different uh parts of you know stages of yourself or whatever but i wasn't aware that the first one was called robo andrew and i actually really like that that's, oh, that's pretty accurate <laughs> yeah i don't know if that's necessarily uh, the the first one but that is definitely a, oh, okay. it's, it's very much the the way i view it in a sort of you know half actual way half common right. ways it's very like a pinocchio becoming a real person yeah becoming yeah. become human well i mean i i kind of identify with that as well um <laughs> um getting into so uh i guess I guess we could get into if you are comfortable with it. Everybody, I know, I know many trans people, and everybody feels differently about that journey and what they are and are not comfortable talking with. So I'm always very kind of cautious. But if you are okay, okay. talking about it, it is a thing that is always I like to ask questions about because I've got my own whatever's thunking around in the old brain right. pan, and learning other people's stories helps me better understand myself because it's very much the you know hold up the card does this resemble me does this not resemble yeah. me is this the path i want to try like and stuff like that so um i will say that i highly recommend if you haven't yet uh watching um uh philosophy tubes video on her realization um because she just came out as trans um and it's a really really uh, in-depth uh, look at her own like thinking and, and the way that she looked at, at the way that she uh, the way that it felt for her to realize that she was trans um, and the the format of the video is set up in such a way that th the idea is that even if you're cis you kind of get an idea of what it feels like to realize that you're trans um, and I think that uh, obviously, I'm not cis, so I don't know for sure. But uh, I feel like 
uh, uh, she did a really good job of it. Um, and, uh, yeah. So if, if you ever want to check that out, just no, for you personally, I, will, I, I think that would be check that out. So starting out, I, um, I had like a couple friends who were trans, um, and, uh, still being caught up in that very, uh, Catholic, extremely religious mindset. Um, even though I, at this point, I wasn't really religious anymore, I still had those mindsets like ingrained in me. They stick with um, you because they're th they're they not really things do. that you think about. Like if you don't think about dismantling them because they're just a part of how you think, they just stay there, and yeah, that's how you continue to think unless something kind of shakes yeah. it up. And, and especially because, um, as part of growing up like that. I was just bombarded with misinformation about uh, various issues like that, um, especially LGBT issues. Mm. Um, and as such, uh, like I, I was exposed to um, like total myths, like people who transition uh, are less happy and they're more likely to commit suicide, which um, I totally bought into as, uh, you know, as, um, you know, as a young Catholic person. Uh, and when I first began to like question that, um, mm -hmm. I, Kind of was like, okay, I'm just going to Google it because I'm pretty sure it's going to prove, you know, my beliefs correct. And then I found out, wait a minute, all of the evidence that I can find, all the studies say that if you, uh, you know, people who trans who transition are healthier and happier post transition, um, in general, like statistically speaking, you know, because. You know, because there's going to be some people who transition and they're like, wait a minute, this isn't for me. And then they detransition and that's fine. You know, it's all part of the self yeah. piece of self discovery. But one moment the, before you continue, where yeah. is this like pre you going into the Navy or is it in the middle? Is it post? Like, I, I want to figure out the timeline of like how long this was kind of cooking in your brain to when you actually tra started transitioning. I think it was later. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I started looking into this stuff when Freya came out. Okay, yeah, that, that's definitely post. Freya and I uh, were pretty darn close friends at that time because <laughs> we were very similar people. Um, I would agree with that <laughs> in, in some ways, yes. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not like totally you know, similar in all ways, but we, we have a lot of commonalities yeah you have a lot of things in common but yeah yeah um different also in other ways so yeah but okay i continue she's she's like a combination of scorpia and entrapta that is on point um, i'm gonna yep. see if i can translate that for people who have not seen yeah. shira so we said um someone who's a little bit more uh we'll say mad scientist yeah. Uh, also a little bit more, I mean, the catcher thing, like, socially catty, but in a kind of playful way. Yeah. Um, uh, can maybe sometimes be, if we're going farther on the Entrapta thing, maybe a little sometimes unaware of things around them? Yeah. That might, pretty... I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to reach too far with these things. Maybe. Yeah. I definitely don't want to, like... Put, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. Put, any like, Ill. Yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, put anything put on stuff. her that... Uh, she isn't aware, you know, that she doesn't agree with, correct, or that she's unaware of. But um, yeah. whereas I am, um, you know, a lot more of a dumb kind of, but not really. Like I'm a, very oblivious in some ways, but at the same time, I'm kind of smart in some ways. Uh, dorky, nerdy, jock type person. <laughs> so anyway, uh. She came out, uh, and I was like, my first reaction was actually kind of negative. I was like, oh no, she's going to be, um, you know, she's going to do things that are 
unhealthy for her. They're going to hurt her mental health. This is bad. Um, and, you know, and that was just a carryover of my uh, upbringing. Um, and then I, like, looked into it. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute. None of what I was taught was right. At all. <laughs> and I started just looking into it some more. Uh, just kind of like, well, I guess this means that I should be like, you know, I, I should probably be, a, you know, I should try to be a good ally to trans people because, you know, a big thing is like, I just want to be a good friend. Yeah. Um, and I started looking more into it just out of, basically out of curiosity. It's um, still a very admirable thing to want to be a good yeah. friend and ally in that regard. I found myself on a... Uh, on a forum where some people were kind of talking about how they felt uh, when they first, you know, how they felt when they were younger and they hadn't realized. Thank you. Um, and they hadn't realized yet that they were trans. And one of one of the things that came up was uh, this person was like, "I always hated having my picture taken, and I didn't know why. Like, it's not really like I." thought I was ugly. I just didn't like having my picture taken. And that kind of just totally rocked me because I was like, holy crap, that is how I always felt. I never thought I was unattractive or anything like that. I mean, you know, beyond, you know, how I feel like everyone has like that self doubt, but for the most part, I thought I was relatively attractive. You were, and... I would, I would agree with that statement. I'm going to put you over. Yeah. But I would say that genuinely. Yeah, but like, you know, in general, I thought I was relatively attractive and, but I didn't like having my picture taken. It just made me intensely uncomfortable. And, um, I would always either avoid, like, if I noticed someone pulling out a camera, I would kind of try to disappear if I could. Um, or I would do something silly to, like, offset the fact, that, you know, like, you know, like, offset the fact that I was really uncomfortable. Um, like, sometimes I have to stare into the distance. Um, I feel like going back through some old photo albums, I can. I've, 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 yeah. I feel like I've ran into that, so that makes a lot more sense now. But anyway, like, someone said that, and I was like, holy crap, I felt like that. Well, I guess that means that I should, like, look into this, see if I'm trans. Like, I'm probably not, but... You, you find those... Yeah. I found that with that and other things, where it's just you get hit with that that one sentence of information that like just instantly resonates with you that you've never heard before. And you're just like other people, like that's a thing. Like other yeah. people have that, like maybe the rest of the things under this umbrella fit me too. And yeah, will help and, make and, things make a lot more sense. And also I was just like, you know, I, I was very, um, I was brought up to be like very rational, like use, do thought experiments and explore uh, concepts, you know, mentally to all the way to the end just to figure out if any interesting things comes from that idea and this was at the moment that's what this felt like um i was like well i'm definitely not trans but let's like look into this just to you know it'll be interesting to see what happens you know and i started looking and i was like wait a minute this person said that they always feel vaguely uncomfortable when they look in the mirror uh, you know, and then like more and more things started like lining up and I was like, this is kind of weird. Like I thought that I would just look into this for like a couple minutes and then like d disregard it. But there are a lot of similarities, like a lot of similarities here. Um, and so instead of being able to just think through that, put it to bed and put it away and never think about it again, which was kind of my plan. It stayed open in my brain. Like it, it kind of was this open question, like, Hey, are you trans? Like, is this a thing that, you know, and, and I like, tr so since I wasn't able to put it to bed and put it away, it clearly resonated with you. A lot. I, I, I tried to force it away, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like... Um, <laughs> Bad I idea! To... So I made this character, and I was walking <laughs> through <laughs> the streets of one of the cities in Oblivion, and I hear, like, 
you know, one of those NPC conversations going on. It's like, did you hear about the hero of Kavach? She closed the Oblivion all uh, Oblivion Gate all by herself, and I was like, "Ooh, I like that." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay, I like that. I I definitely like." Okay, so this is not gonna like this isn't gonna you know, leave this you This isn't alone. gonna get this isn't gonna let me uh, have let me put this down. This is just you know. Um, and then I was playing the, I think it was the Knights of the Nine, uh, uh, DLC oh, for okay. Oblivion. And, uh, they never recorded lines for female main characters. Oh. Yeah. So one of the characters like called me sir or something. And it felt like I was, had been like punched in the stomach hmm. and I was like oh <laughs> um, like because you know I, I had known just from my research that it, it's an impolite thing to do to refer to a trans person using the wrong pronouns R refer to anybody uh, using the wrong yeah, pronouns any, yeah. anybody the wrong pronouns but like I I had like learned just through my research that it was, you know, a, you don't do that, you know? Um, and I was trying to be a good friend. I, you know, tried to do that with Freya. Um, and, uh, but I didn't really get it until that moment. I, I, it felt like a punch in the stomach. I was like, Oh wow. Okay. That hurt actually. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Uh, that was kind of what made me think, okay, I gotta actually start thinking about this seriously. Like, I gotta either, you know, like, I, obviously I can't transition, but maybe I can just stay closeted for the rest of my life, but at the very least, I'm thinking of myself as a trans person now, you know? It's a, um, it's a it's a journey of, of, of begrudging yeah, inches, but you got there. Very begrudging Self, inches. Self-begrudging. Yeah. Um, huh. um, and I think the next development was when um, I had a girlfriend at one point who really wanted these leggings that had like the text for Macbeth printed out on them. They were very nerdy and very cute, and you no. Know. And the thing is, I had bought them for her, but I'd accidentally had them shipped to my place instead of her place. And at this point it was a long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was like trying to remember to send them to her. Um, but I never remember to do it. Uh, and then we broke up before I actually remember to do it at some mm -hmm. point. And I had them like up in the, the back of my, the top back of my closet, you know, on the top shelf. You stash things. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, where, where <laughs> I stash things and, um, the next development when it was when I was I remembered those uh, leggings and I was like, "Huh, maybe I should like try them on and see what happens." And I tried them on, <laughs> and I immediately just felt really comfortable. Like, no, I know, <laughs> I've played, I have done a nice, similar you know? thing, and you're like, "Oh wow, this is what this is about." Yeah, it's kind of it, nice. It was just, and like I took a picture of myself and. I don't think that I had taken a selfie. Like, I took selfies very, very rarely. Um, a couple of times just to document. You know, when we were out on deployment, we would uh, grow mustaches. Um, and sometimes I would document them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got to pass the time somehow. That is basically the extent of all the selfies I ever took of myself. And anyway, I took a picture of myself just from the waist down, like kind of like over the head, waist down of me in these uh, leggings. And I was like, wow, I really like that. Then and I like, took a couple more, I took a couple more pictures <laughs> and I never really showed them to anybody. Um, but uh, like, I was like, oh, this, 
like this is actually enjoyable. Now I understand why people take selfies. It's because they like the way they look. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, after that, like, uh, I got myself some. <laughs> it was a struggle to get a skirt. Really? I, I was looking for a skirt, and I just couldn't find them. Like, I went to Walmart or whatever. Now, admittedly, I don't, I'm not a big shopper. I don't know where to shop for things. But I would go to, like, Walmart or Target, which is where I usually get my clothes, and there were never any skirts there. I guess so, you went on, you went in physical store instead of trying online, so. Exactly. Exactly. That's I where I went, and that's store. why it's just like, oh, you know, you, yeah. you figure it out, a little trial and error, finding sizes, and then yeah. you're off to the races. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really aware that I could like, you know, trial and error for sizes. I wanted to try things on. Um, and the first skirt that I found was at Hot Topic. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> and that was kind of cool. Cause you know, they, they were very understanding. They were just like, okay, yeah, you want to, you want a, a little like, skirt yeah we we got one for you and we're not going to ask you questions when you go in the back to try it on to make sure it fits you you know um uh and i got like some thigh high socks from the internet uh and uh that's when i like really started taking like lots and lots of pictures of myself um just from the waist down um and uh it was the weirdest thing because i had never you know, liked taking pictures of myself before ever. Um, uh, and uh, so at that point, I was just like in my room, I would dress up in thigh high so uh, socks and a skirt and maybe some panties. Um, but else, you know, out in the rest of my house, because I was living with a roommate, um, I would, you know, just dress in whatever else. Um, and that was like that for a while. Uh, I was like, I'm definitely a trans person. There's no way I can come out. Like one thing you have to understand that I, I ended up being the first openly queer person in my entire extended family, Mo mother's side, father's side, everywhere. Like it wasn't even like, you know, some gay cousin somewhere. It was just like just, the first you're one. The first. <laughs> so it was like completely uh, outside, like in my mind, like the realm of possibility. Like I definitely cannot come out to them. No way. I can't come out to my, you know, my immediate family either because they're so religious, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, but I was like, this is what makes me happy. And it, it like kind of makes, you know, I can, I can survive on this. I can, you know, I can go through another more decades of this until I won't, just won't have to worry about it anymore. It's, this is, you know, uh, <laughs> this is pretty, uh, pretty dark times here. I mean, in some ways, but in other ways, like really exciting times. The, the, the primordial, not primordial ooze, but like when you're in the crucible, that's what we'll call it. Like when you're in yeah. that, when you're like changing your shape and your form, like in the it's cocoon. sometimes the most painful time, but that's also without that process of my bones. Yeah. Uh, I don't know my why bones. I went for bones. Uh, I, but I think it was funny. You I mean, that's kind of <laughs> how you come out on the other end as yeah, a, and, a, a more correctly shaped, happier you, whatever that shape may be. Yeah. And, and it's, it's weird because like when I'm, when I'm telling you these things, like, as these words are coming out of my mouth, I realize, wow, this is really dark thought processes. Like, yeah, I could just make it a couple more, you know, I could just withstand decades. the next yeah. couple decades and and then I'll be dead and I won't have to worry about it anymore. Like, I'm aware of how dark that sounds. I didn't even <laughs> think it was you dying. I just assumed it was your family. Oh, no. Which is also yeah. dark. Eh, which is also dark, yes. But no, yeah, I was just thinking like, yeah, once I'm dead, then I won't, like... Um, so yeah, that, that kind of set the tone for me to enter like the really dark period was, which was when I realized this is not enough. I need to come out, but I can't. Um, I am out to like, 
a couple internet friends. I have them calling me sure her pronouns, but this isn't enough. I, I have to go full time, um, but I can't. Yeah. Uh, and that lasted for a couple months uh, until um, I read this one story uh, called. Um, it was a story in the SCP franchise, for the lack of a better word. I don't think it's really a franchise. I think it's a canon. I don't know. It's a it's some the loose SCP connection. Foundation. Yeah. Uh, it's an internet group of it, it's it's a bunch of internet literature that has vague connections to each other. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you should get familiar Go with Google it. Go Google it. It's a good time. Go Google it. SCP Foundation. Um, and uh, the one I'm thinking of is uh, um, the story about this character named Veronica Fitzroy. Yes, actually. Okay, let's continue. You actually told me this story recently. Yes. So, uh, and Veronica Fitzroy is a trans character and she is fantastically well written and um avoiding spoilers um in fact one character describes says that she looks like roadkill that hasn't died yet um like very unflattering you know language uh but almost all of the characters gender her correctly almost every single one um with a few very notable exceptions, but the vast majority of them always gender her correctly. And uh, I realized that I was jealous of her. I reached that like lowest point where I was like, mm -hmm. I would rather be an ugly girl than a good looking guy. I would rather. I would rather be, be an in... L just to be gendered properly. Yeah. I would rather be in a, a scientific facility with people running experiments on me um, than be in my life right now, <laughs> you know, uh, and I feel like I really had to hit that rock bottom before I was like, I'm absolutely going to do this. Um, and once I made that decision, it was pretty darn fast. Like, uh, and I think that's why it helped me to reach that, that rock bottom. You need because... those points. Cause that's what lets you just go like, okay, like the, the, the other logic will go out the window and you go like, I need this. Like I can't yeah. keep functioning. Um, other people. Other trans people have remarked to me that, like, I moved very quickly with things. Like, um, I, uh, uh, before I even um, started hormones, I was going out in public dressed as a girl, um, which is apparently not very common. <laughs> um, and I mean, you're still, you're still you. You are still yeah. this, you know. But the strong the point I'm making, person, it's just moving in a different yeah. direction now. Yeah. So, like, I, first of all, I am very strong-headed. I know that. But also, the fact that I, I mean, hit that, that rock bottom, I think, yeah, in a good way and in a bad way. I have my. Moments, I didn't say bad you know? way. I said I mean, a good way. In some ways, I. If I wanted say to imply bad, bad, I would have said stubborn, and I didn't. <laughs> okay, I will say I am a very stubborn person, <laughs> and that's me saying this. You said it. <laughs> yes, I am saying this about myself. Um, that can be a good thing, a good thing and a bad thing. But uh, anyway, so I think the fact that I hit that rock bottom where I was like, I w am jealous of this character um, is really what rocketed me forward to just get through all this stuff really fast, which was great because it turns out that like, uh, I think this was like December of twenty. 2018, I think. Makes December sense. of 2018 makes sense to me. Uh, I believe March of 2019, I believe, is when tr uh, former President Trump uh, put out on uh, put out on oh, uh, yeah, That would have been around the same time. Actually, no, it was before that. It was, I think it was like February or something. But it was kind of on my radar that trans people are going to be banned from the military. military. Um, and 
there's going to be people who are already out and who are already receiving medical, you know, you know, medical transitional care um, are going to be able to continue being in the military, receiving that care. But if you don't get in before the deadline, you're out of luck and you either have to not transition or you have to leave the military. Oof. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of on my radar. And I know that in March, uh, it, there were, I think, three cases, three Supreme Court cases that were preventing this from going forward because he announced it on Twitter first and then he tried to ram it through as he did, uh, as he did. Um, and there are three Supreme court cases that were preventing it from happening. Someday in March, uh, two of those cases got struck down. I was standing watch. Uh, basically I was just answering phones. I was on at a desk answering phones and I was like, you know, I had a computer there and I was kind of like checking the news and I saw um, two of the three cases, uh, holding up this, um, trans military ban have been struck down and basically everyone is expecting the third one to go really fast. Um, and I was like, okay, I guess now's the time. I guess I, we're doing I, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got up from my desk right there and I went down to my uh our commands uh career counselor and i was like hey can i talk to you privately <laughs> i was like i'm transgender and she was like okay um <laughs> i think i remember you talking about this in our chat thread yeah that like it's like i'm like oh yeah i, I remember this part of the story yeah so uh she was like okay first thing we need to do is we need to get you um like get you talking to a mental health professional so then we can get you get that ball rolling. Um, how soon? Uh, uh, let's see if we'll be able to get you a, uh, an appointment for that. And as it so happens, uh, a couple weeks earlier, um, I had been put on, we, we're going to have to put trigger warnings for this section, I think. Okay. Um, earlier on. Actually, <laughs> I'm really sorry to do this, Veronica, but we're yeah. like running over on time. Oh, even yeah. Even though like this, this is a really important story, but okay. I'm also almost out of time recording as well. <laughs> so I, I'm, uh, we'll put a little bit on the story, but I think this means we gotta we gotta come back and do an addendum at some point in the future because there is definitely okay. more story to tell here, and I, I feel awful having to cut it here. But, yeah, no, that's fine. Um. I guess it gives us a reason to pick back up with you then. Okay, that so, sounds good to me. So uh, yeah, no, because this was like this has been fantastic, and I feel, I'm like <laughs> looking over the clock, and we're like going over and over, and I'm like trying to keep this at a certain length, and also I'm out of time because I've had other I've got other obligations then. So right, but no, this has been fantastic. We have to follow up at some point so we can kind of we got continue. a cliffhanger. <laughs> we got we to keep people interested until whenever the heck next time. Yeah, uh, we'll be able to we'll be able to put out part two. Um, yep. But no, thank you, Veronica. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. Guest, guest numero the dos. Um, big shoes filled. Um, <laughs> Who was the first person out of curiosity? Uh, not a human that you know, actually. Ah, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I wanted, I very wanted it specifically to just be like completely different, like branches just to get like a variety where it wasn't just like, oh, yeah. you know, that particular group. It's like, oh, well, this one and this one and this one just to get a good mix of, of people and stories and just my own ability to be able to do this and rock and roll with it. So awesome. uh, thank you for this. Uh, is there anything yeah. you want to plug social media, general things you want to shout into the universe? Not really. In a, in a trite and pithy <laughs> manner. Nope. But thank you very much for yeah. the opportunity and thank you for interviewing me. And I look forward to picking it up whenever we can. Me and too. I really, really appreciate you as a friend, and Aww. I love you very much. Me too. And it's been awesome to just have this time to talk. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, and I, and I feel like you're, you're, you're kind of vibrating in that same frequency. Is like you can't normally have these types of conversations with people that just don't happen, or they feel. But like, there's something about having the the thin veneer of a structure of an interview that kind of just helps it come out more and i feel like you get yeah. closer to people when you can just blatantly say 
how you're feeling. Here's my backstory. It, literally, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's amazing how many, like, things that I've learned about people that I didn't know about. I mean, even just in the mm. short beginning that I feel like I didn't know that. And you kind of, you know, you get closer to people. So yeah, thank absolutely. you for joining us. Uh, you can catch me, uh, Andrew Kermit the Grog, wherever the heck I'm going by with all of these. Uh, here again on the Grog Zone, and we will hopefully be catching Veronica again for part two to end this cliffhanger. So <laughs> thank you, everybody, and uh, have a good one until next time. Bye-bye. A huge thank you to our patrons, Sam Dash, Frenchie McHugh, Riffwing Designs, Statman Dan, and Jason Kuzmak. Without your support, this project wouldn't be possible.